If you are at this point, it is time. There's no more messing around. You need to know exactly how your zones are gonna lay out. Which zones are gonna have shared devices, which zones are gonna be your main entrance, your um, motion detectors, all those things. You need to know exactly where they're gonna lay out. Um, I like to make my zone one my main entrance. So you don't want, let's pretend that I, I exit my house, right? I exit my house, I turn on my alarm, and then when I go back home, and I'm gonna go use the front door when I go home, I don't want the alarm to go off when I go through the front door. I want it to give me some time to disarm the alarm. So I like to put that one as my zone one. Zone one is gonna be the alarm. When I, when I open the door, it gives me a countdown of 30 seconds or 60 seconds or 15 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever you want. It's gonna give you a certain amount of time to turn off the alarm, to put in your code and turn off the alarm. Okay, so that's a very important one. So that for me is gonna be zone one. I just like doing it, it's easy to remember. My zone one is always my primary, my primary entrance or exit. So uh, this, this uh, 10 and 11, which is used for my smoke detectors, is also um, for my zone one. So I'm gonna go ahead here. It doesn't matter which wire I land on here, the polarity does not matter. And I'm gonna go ahead and land my red wire. Okay, so now this red wire right here leaves to this panel it goes out to the um, door contact, and then it connects to the, there's two wires on the door contact. It connects to one wire of the door contact and the black wire connects to the other one. So the red one is going out of my panel, hitting the door contact on red and coming back on black. All right, so here's my black wire. Now, I need to put a resistor on here and, I, and you use the resistors that came with the panel. Ta-da! If your panel doesn't have resistors, like if you have an old one, you're gonna have to look it up and find out which value they want. So what I do is this is too much slack. I don't need that much slack on mine. The kind of left thing is super long. So, and I don't like extra wire hanging out. That's just asking for a short, some type of problem. So you can see I got copper here. I got this one here. So what I like to do is I take them and I twist them together. That's gonna make sure I got a good strong connection. Then I take these things here. I call these beanies. Other people call them dolphin connectors. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Put that over the top of it. I try to cover all of the wire. So just that little, um, just the, the, the resistor part of the resistor is showing. Okay. And I give her a squeeze. Squeeze her. All right. Then this one right here, this is too long too. This is asking for a short. I'm just gonna cut it. I don't know, what is that? Half an inch? Okay. Then I take that guy, and he's gonna go on terminal number 12. Bam! All right. All right, so I've got one zone done already. Can you believe that? One zone, what's up? All right. The next thing I wanna do is I'm going to do another zone, but this time I'm gonna do something a little different. Um, I have enough zones on my panel that I do not need to share devices on my zone, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it anyways. We're gonna pretend like my kitchen window and my dining room window are right next to each other. So there's no reason to put, or rather this is a good time to share zones. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip the wire. Hey, this wire's different wire stranded. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, and it doesn't matter. I can go red to black, black to red. It doesn't matter. So just for giggles, because I'm OCD, eh, let's go black to red. We'll go crazy. How about that? Once again, twist the wires together. Okay. Put on your dolphin connector. Give her a squeeze. I see, you see I start at the top and squoze all the way down. All right, now let's talk about how this is working. So, I'm going to land, it doesn't matter which one, I'll go ahead and just to keep it the same, I'll land the red one on the next wire on zone two, which is wire number, uh, oh shoot, I messed this up. So that's 10 and 11, no that's right. Okay, so my next wire goes over here on wire 12. 
Oh, look, I got too much copper showing. Too much copper showing. I don't like it. I'm going to trim it down just a little bit. This closet is so stinking hot. Oh, my gosh. All right. So that's number 13. That's screw number 13. And then this guy here. So what's going here? We leave the panel here on the red wire. The red wire goes out. It hits that window contact. Then it comes back. It goes through the window contact. The red wire and black wire are both connected to it. So it goes there on red. Comes back on black. Then goes to then goes back out on red to the kitchen window. And then comes back from the kitchen window on black. So on this one right here, on the black end, what goes right there? I hope you said a resistor. Because then I'll be like Dora and I'll be like, you did it! Okay. Twist them together. Do I have to pay royalties to Dora if I said her name? I hope not. If so, I'm not talking about Dora the Explorer. I'm talking about Dora the Journeyman Electrician. Okay. Squeeze the dolphin connector. And then cut it off so it's about half an inch long. And then I'm going to land it. Right there. Okay. Now we've landed two zones. We've landed zone one, which is my front door. And now zone two consists of um, my living room window and my dining room window. So now let's get ready to do a motion detector. All right. We have our two zones landed there. It's time to land a motion detector. A motion detector gets landed a little bit different. Remember what we said, just like the keypad, the red and black are the power wires, the green and the yellow are the smart wires. That's the same thing for our motion detectors. The red and black are power. Green and yellow is our smart wires. These are the wires that are telling us if we're an alarm or not. So we're gonna go ahead and land these. So looking at my panel, for zone three, I'm gonna have one wire on wire number 13. So I think this is 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm gonna have another wire on 14. I'm gonna do something tricky here, watch. So I'm gonna take this here. This is not tricky, because this is what the panel wants you to do. So it's not tricking if it's what you're supposed to do. I'm gonna put one wire on 14, just like the panel told me. And the other wire needs to go on 13, but if you look, I've already got a resistor on 13. What is that all about? Well, all that means is that one screw right there, you're going to put two resistors on it. You're going to put one resistor for one zone and one resistor for the other zone. So let me trim this sucker down to size. Enjoy looking at my panel while I do that. Okay. Twist that sum the gun together. Get my dolphin connector. I gotta try to remember to call these things by names that you guys can go and find these things online or at your store. Cause you go there and say, hey, do you guys have beanies? They're gonna be like, what, like a hat? I'm like, no dude, the AV guy said beanie. I call them beanies, I call them beanies forever. But they're, I think more appropriately called dolphin connectors. I think that's most people understand them as. Okay, so, <gasps> oh my gosh, it came off. What a crime. I guess that means I didn't do a very good job squeezing it together, huh? Oh, you know what? I think it broke. Put another one on. It did. It broke. I have never had that happen before. You're never going to believe me. But I promise you, never happened before. All right, try it again. Okay, cut off a little bit. I had a bad resistor or something. Maybe I squeezed the resistor and broke it. Don't know, dude. Okay, twist it together. Get my dolphin connector all up in that business. Oh my gosh, it's so hot in here. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Cut off this to about half an inch. Choomp. All right, so remember we are sharing 
um, we're sharing screws with this other resistor here. One resistor on one side, one resistor on the other side. Make sure the resistors aren't touching anything they're not supposed to be touching. Like other wires, things like that. Bam! There you go. So now the zones are laid out for zone one, zone two, zone three is my motion detector. But, alas, my, um, my motion detectors need power. I don't have any power going to my motion detectors right now. So, what I have to do is I have to land this power to the same power that goes to my keypad. Now, all this is, this right here, this, this output right here, all that is is power output. That's just power. It doesn't care what's connected to it. It's just giving, whatever's connected to it, it's giving it 12 volts. Whether it's a keypad or it's a motion detector, it doesn't care. 12 volts for everybody that's connected. All right. So I just put my red underneath the red screw, my black underneath uh, the screw for the black, and that's it. We're powered up. I mean, this is a really simple uh, alarm. It, it, it would actually work right now if I had everything connected. Um, on the other side right now, I only have the panel side connected, but I'm going to go through and show you how to connect the devices too. I'll show you how to connect the electrical transformer, the keypad, the siren, the motion detector, door contacts, window contacts. I'll show you how guys how to do all that stuff. So the panel part... Um, really, it's just going to be repeat. Just keep repeating, just like we did here. Um, you're, so you're going to see this is a wire. Then we're going to have another wire. We're going to have uh, resistors, and it's just going to go on. Just follow your wiring diagram. Um, I feel like this is pretty thorough. If you guys have questions, feel free to ask because uh, maybe you guys all have the same question, and I'll shoot a video and uh, fix it. But looks like the panel part is done enough that you guys can handle this. Now we're going to move on to doing the devices. So here's my keypad. This is my front door keypad. Um, here are shortcut buttons here. You can make shortcut buttons. So if you press and hold the button, the you know it'll arm in the stay mode or arm in the away mode or it'll call the fire department or police or whatever it's going to be. These are shortcut buttons. You can program those. We're not going to talk about that. Inside the flap um, right here is a sticker. Um, this particular um, keypad will show me the zone name so I can name it um, front window, back window, whatever and it'll show me the name but some of yours won't show the name it'll just have a number it'll say four and it's kinda hard to remember what number four is so down here four you would write four about back door so when you go to try to arm the alarm and it says number four you know that number four is open you look down here oh back door and you can go fix that okay so this is mine here we're gonna first things first, we're gonna pop off the back panel. For me, I just have these little tabs I gotta push in. Push that one and then that one, and hopefully I don't drop it on the ground. Oh, come on, buddy. There we go. Got the pieces separated. Here's the back part, here's the front part. We don't care about the front part just yet. Let's set that down. Okay, here's my back plate. Um, here's the wire. I ran the wire for my keypad earlier. Come here, you. Stuffed it in the wall here. Had this hole in my wall for a while. Looking forward to the opportunity where I can put my keypad on. All right, so here we go. Here's the back plate. Um, as a general rule of thumb, I like to put these keypads kind of high. Uh, that way you can see it, um, not, not necessarily eye level, that would be too high, that would look kind of funky. Mine is about chest level. You can see my light switch, this is my light switch right here, and my light switches are actually a little higher than normal. So uh, I'm not going much higher than my light switch. So I'm going to center this sucker on the light switch and I'm going to level it. Making sure, I'm just going to leave a little tiny space for my wire to get in, like that. That looks pretty good to me. Okay. I got my level. I'm going to make sure that guy's level right there, right there. That's level. It doesn't look exactly centered above my switch. 
You could take measurements and center it if you want. I'm not doing that. I'm eyeballing it because when I come back and check and I look at it from a distance, that's all I'm going to be doing is eyeballing it anyways. Okay, um, you can put in as many anchors as you want. You can put in six anchors here if you want. I'm going to put in two. So I'll mark the center of that hole and I'm going to mark the center of that hole right there. Get rid of this guy. I'm a big fan of these corkscrew anchors. They're really easy to put in, they hold a ton of weight. Uh oh, I think we're gonna bust out our wall here. Oh, held together good. There's one. There's two. Okay, put the back plate on. <laughs> My kids are watching a movie downstairs. If you guys know what movies are watching, leave a comment. Okay. Put my screws in. You can use a drill. I know, I'm doing it like a caveman. Sometimes I go old school. Truth be told, too lazy to go get my drill. Woo! See that? Shot off like a rocket. Okay, make sure it stays level. Boom bada. All right, now it's time to wire it up. All right, let's wire this dude up. Same as before. Go ahead and trim the end. Strip it. Pull the string. Cut off the nonsense. Okay, now we're only gonna strip a little bit. We don't need to strip like half an inch. We're stripping more like quarter of an inch, 3 sixteenths, because it's a really small terminal that it goes into. Okay, now if you look at the back of your keypad, very small writing. You'll see this right here, this, oh, it's upside down, sorry. See right here, you got a Y, next to that you got a plus, then a minus, then a G. Yellow, plus, minus, G, green. So, we'll go ahead and land this. Yellow goes on Y. I bet you guys figured that out, huh? Heck yeah. A lot of this stuff is so... Self-explanatory, I know you guys are looking to go, dude, this is dumb, why do you make a video? I want you guys to have confidence that you guys can do this. It's really easy, you've probably just never seen it before. Now you're looking at it going, dude, this is so easy. I can't believe that people charge money for this to get done. So yellow, positive is gonna be red, negative is gonna be black. G is going to be green. Remember, your red and black are just power. Your yellow and green are your smart wires. So, just 
screw that dude down, tuck the slack into the wall, kind of fold it over nicely, and that's it. Hang the top. And then click it. Bam. Done. Easy as that. Moving on. Here we go with the motion detector. It's going to end up there in the corner. You can see the wires coming down the wall. So to make my life a little easier, I'm going to wire mine up while it's nice and low on the ground. And then after it's wired, I'll move up and install it. All right, see so if I can keep my big head out of the way. So the same as always, we're going to strip the wire. around it, pull the string, it's okay that I have a ton of slack here, that's fine, uh, my, my wire is coming out of the ceiling, so I'll be able to push my, my wire back up inside the ceiling without a problem. If you guys can't push your wire, like if your wire is coming out of the wall or something and you can't get the slack back in the wall, then you have to cut your wire a little shorter. For me, not a problem. All right, wire's nice and stripped. Pull out my handy dandy. Um, this is my motion detector. They also call them PIR, passive infrared. Anyways, uh, this is my um, motion detector. So let's talk about real quick about the terminals. If you look here in the terminals, you got a plus, a minus, NC stands for normally closed, C stands for common, and then TT, those are for tamper. So um, you could have an alarm or trouble. Um, if somebody were to remove the cover, then you know that you know something fishy is going on, so that would send off, set off an alarm if somebody removes the cover. I'm not doing that here. All I care about is uh, the common and normally closed. And then we also, this is the smart side of it. This is the alarm side. Common and normally closed is the alarm side. V plus, V minus, that's your power side, okay? Um, so we're gonna go ahead, and you always have to knock a hole in the back of these things. You choose any hole that you want. I will choose, I don't know, probably, ow, I just stabbed myself in the hand. Don't do that. That came out a lot easier. Normally you have to like really beat on these things to get them to come out, okay? Knocked a little hole in it. I'm going to feed my wire through the back first, just like that. Don't get crazy excited and wire, wire the front of it here. Let me move you a little closer. Whoop. If you wire the front of it, go ahead and wire the wires without running it through the back, you're going to end up taking it off. Okay. So. Remember that the alarm side is yellow and green. The alarm side is yellow and green. So it doesn't matter which one goes on C for common and which one goes on normally closed. It doesn't matter. Take your pick. As long as you're using the right wires. Okay? Long, as long as you're using the alarm side of the wires, not the power side of the wires. That's yellow on one, green on the other, and then V minus is my negative power supply. V plus my positive power. Double check your wiring after you get all the wiring in there. Double check it. Make sure none of the wires are touching each other, that none of the copper is touching each other, rather. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Make sure that none of the rubber is underneath the screws. 
and that's going to be a good contact right there. Then you have to make sure that you get this wire out of the way like that because when we put the cover on, uh, when we put the cover on there, you want to make sure that the wire isn't hitting uh, the cover or any of the other um, the terminals or anything like that. Okay, not all motion detectors look like this, but most of them look pretty similar. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mount this up in the corner. We're going to pretend like this is the top of my wall. It's not. I'm just going to show you how because I'm going to have a hard time getting the camera up there. I'm going to mount this guy all the way up to the top of my wall and I'm going to mount him in the corner just like that. Okay, not, I mean, I guess you could mount a flat here or flat there if you wanted, but I want to go just like that. Okay? So there's screws on the side, there's holes on the side. I got a hole right there, and there's a hole right there, or you can drill a hole if you want, doesn't really matter. I'm just going to put a screw through there and a screw through there. Um, you don't really have to use a drywall anchor on these, there's no pressure, there's nobody going to touch them, there's no finagling. Uh, it's just holding up this thing that weighs two ounces up on the wall. So you can just use a regular coarse thread drywall screw, which is what I generally do. So I'm going to go ahead and move the camera out of the way. I'll try to get the best shot I can, but it's kind of hard. And then we're going to mount this thing up in the ceiling.